Well, good afternoon. I'm Bill Swarda, uh, and there we go. And I'd like to tell you about some work we've been doing on building virtual humans for learning. Uh, I'm director of technology at the USC Institute for Creative Technologies. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to pick up on some points that uh, James Lester was making this morning, where he was saying that really uh, we know that people learn best from tutors, uh, that that's the, you know, really gives you a very good way of learning, uh, much better than classroom uh, oriented instruct instruction. But of course, we can't always have a personal tutor. Uh, and as James pointed out, uh, computer tutors can help with that, um, but they've tended to focus solely on cognitive issues, on learning the facts, on, on, on the, the mental part, uh, but they leave out sort of the social part that uh, a tutor can, Im, 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 uh, can give you, such as enthusiasm or rapport or sympathy uh, with empathy. Um, and we're wondering, you know, how could these social elements be added? Uh, and our thought is that virtual humans, by which we mean computer-generated characters that look and act as much as possible like real people, um, could begin to provide those social elements. When we talk about virtual humans, we're talking about characters that are autonomous, that interact fluidly, that use natural language to communicate you, and as well as nonverbal communications, and exhibit uh, emotions. And perhaps these are uh, the ultimate test for artificial intelligence. So um, our vision for this is also that this really could be a whole new way of interacting, a whole new metaphor for how we interact with computers. Rather than a desktop metaphor, it's much more like talking with another person. And in a sense, the standard computer interface goes away. A lot of studies have shown that people respond to these virtual characters in much the same way that they respond to real people. And that gives credence to the idea that we may be able to add in these social elements by using virtual humans. So we think that they can add these elements. And I'd like to give you some examples of a couple of systems that we've built that uh, embody this. The first is a pair of characters that we created called Ada and Grace that act as virtual museum guides. And these were done at the, uh, under NSF funding at the Boston Museum of Science. Uh, and they are acting as docents uh, in the museum uh, there. So you can get advice about what you can see, uh, things you can do there. They also have a backstory, so they can tell you about what their favorite color is, uh, uh, and other things about their own background, uh, how they work, things like that. Um, in the museum, they are there in a kiosk in uh, a place, part of the museum called Connor's Computer Place, which is where most of the IT exhibits in the museum exist. And um, when we were developing these characters, we originally had proposed to just create a single character, but uh, in talking to people at the ICT and our creative director, who uh, Kim LaMasters, he suggested that, gee, you know, if we had two characters, they could interact between each other and it would be sort of like click and clack on car talk, if you've ever listened to that. Um, the problem was, of course, we'd already submitted the budget and we'd only budgeted for one character. But we realized that if we made them twins, we could reuse the art assets <laughs> and maybe come close to meeting our budget. So we did that. Um, and here's a, uh, a video that gives you an idea of what it's like to interact with these characters. Hello. 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 Is there, Is there something, something we can help you with? Who, Who are, are you? My, My name is Ada. Ada. And, and I'm Grace. We're, We're your virtual, virtual museum, museum guides. With, with your help, we can, we can suggest exhibits that will get you thinking or answer questions about, questions about things you may have seen here. here. What, what do you want to learn about? about? What, what can, can I do up here? Here at Computer, Computer Place, you, you can command a robot to do a Mars mission and, and program another one at Robot Park. Park. And, and don't forget the one that remembers meeting you. you. What, what do you, you want to do first? first? How do you How understand, understand what people are saying? saying? We're, We're virtual humans. humans. We, we use speech recognition technology to identify your words and then and and use statistics to figure out the meaning of the words based on context. Once, Once we, we know, know what, what you're talking about, about we'll, we'll reply appropriately. How did, How did you, you get your names? names? Our, Our namesakes are Ada Lovelace and Grace Hopper. 
Yeah, yeah they, they may be old-fashioned old names, but, but both are from the most modern, modern computing women of their time. In the, in the 1800s, 1800s Ada, Ada Lovelace predicted that computers would someday help us write music and create, create art. art. And, and in, in this past century, Grace, Grace Hopper created a type of computer program called a compiler, which, which helps people tell computers what to do. It, it could be said that Ada inspired Grace. Or that Grace, Grace did, did all the work, work in, in which, which case our names, names are perfect. Do you have boyfriends? Why? Is there, Is there another, another virtual human, human you think we should meet? I, I hope they're into neural, neural networks and amino, amino acid sequences. sequences. Grace, what's, what's wrong with just charming and generous? <laughs> okay, okay, that's, that's all. all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming by. by. Have, Have a, a great, great time, time with all, all the exhibits, exhibits at Computer Place. Place. So one of the things we realized was that by putting these characters into the museum, we were also putting a lot of high technology into the museum to support them. So there's another part of the uh, kiosk. You can walk around on the side, and you can see basically the behind-the-scenes view of how they work. So we show the speech recognition uh, system in operation, the statistical classifier in operation, and kids can start to understand how this stuff uh, actually can all uh, come together and uh, go forward. Um, the initial impressions that we got from the, from the staff, this has been in operation now at the museum since December of 2009, uh, were very enthusiastic. And I think you can see on the kids' faces there some, some real engagement and enthusiasm. Um, we've also been doing uh, a, just completed a formal evaluation, uh, a summative evaluation, uh, that was done by uh, the Institute for Learning Innovations and uh, Susan, Susan Foots, who I think is here in the audience uh, somewhere, right, right over there. And uh, we wanted the intended impacts we wanted the system to have were to show that uh, kids and adults would increase their engagement and interest in computer science and technology, that they would have a more positive attitude about computer science and technology. They would increase their awareness of those technologies, and they would have better knowledge. And uh, after completing the, uh, the study, we found that, in fact, all of these major impacts were achieved, and the indicators that give evidence that those uh, impacts were achieved, all of the indicators were achieved except for one. So we thought that was really a nice, uh, a nice result. Um, I want to switch gears now and talk about another somewhat more somber virtual human that we've, uh, we've implemented. This is, this, the project is called SimCoach, and uh, this is designed to be a mentor for people, for veterans who are returning from Afghanistan or Iraq to give them uh, information about problems they may be having in re-entering society. As you know, there's a high incidence of uh, depression and PTSD among uh, returning veterans. And there's actually a significant stigma associated if you're in the Army with seeking medical, medical care. Basically, it's a sign of weakness. And so if you go see the shrink and you're in the Army, you know, this is potentially a career-limiting move. Um, what we wanted to do was to create a character, a web-based, anonymous, interactive character that could serve as a front end to medical knowledge bases and, and resources and give people ideas about uh, how they could seek help. So I'd like to give you a quick uh, overview of how this system works. Uh, you basically can interact with the system by, uh, on a keyboard, you will, can we, we're not having trouble getting this to work. There we go. Hi, Hi there, my name's William Ford, Ford. and you, you can call, call me Bill, Bill. pleased Please to meet you. you. And Bill will ask you questions about your condition, a lot of questions, to try to understand what's going on. This is one. Can we play the movie? You, you find, find you, you get pissed, pissed off more often now than you did before your deployment? And you say yes, and he asks you a bunch more questions. Well, it well, sounds, sounds like, like you're yeah, he gives you some advice. You know, you know things, things just aren't as satisfying as they used to be. Now, now this, this is pretty common for people who are going through major changes. changes. Now, I, I know, know it's rough, rough, but 
You need, you need to, to be, be easy on yourself. yourself. Here's, Here's three things, things that can help. help. Having, having someone, someone to talk to, reading more about, about this thing you're going, going through, and, and get back, back into the swing, swing of things. Here's, Here's some, some links, links to get you started. started. So this helps people get directed to the appropriate resources, but also creates a character who builds a relationship and some rapport with them as they're going through this process and encourages them to come back. So to close, um, just want to mention that I think there are a lot of opportunities for using virtual humans in the learning sciences, a whole variety of different ways that they can be used. Um, and some parting thoughts are, I think for too long, we've really asked students to adjust to computers. But maybe now is time to turn the tables on that and get computers that act more like people. And doing so, I think, is going to bring social elements to the interaction that will really open up new vistas for interaction here. So I'd like to thank you uh, very much for your attention.